This video is to help give some visual illustrations of different degrees of autocorrelation, specifically the first autocorrelation. So I'm going to set some things up in the code over here. Uh, first, we'll look at this row one. That's the first autocorrelation. Look at a really big value, 0.95. Not quite one, but very, very large for a correlation. Uh, so I'll simulate 800 periods of data. And then I'll start by just plotting the first 30. You can see here's period one up to period 30. And you can see because there's such a high degree of autocorrelation, uh, the even though the mean is zero which is not at all obvious from this graph but you'll see it later even though the mean is zero because we start out below zero it has this tendency to stay below zero so when it's below the mean that sort of negative deviation tends to persist for a long time before finally coming back up towards zero now, if we add the next five periods, and now you see it goes from period one up to period 35. So the first part is the same as what we saw. We just added five more periods, and then I'll just keep adding periods onto the end, but still starting at period one. You can just kind of see what it looks like as we sort of keep adding data to the end of this time series. Um, so here now I start getting some positive deviations, positive values. And again, because the first autocorrelation is so close to one, those are very persistent. Um, and so we have this sort of extended departure from the mean, which is zero. Um, so finally, here's the full 800 periods. And so you can see, even though we do have these sort of extended departures, uh, it always ends up coming back to zero and crossing zero, uh, no matter how far out we get. Um, so here, that's the mean, just to make it easier to see. We keep coming back to the mean eventually, just that we might leave for a long time. Now, in contrast, if we made the first autocorrelation zero, and then we did the same thing where we generate 800 periods, but we just look a little bit at a time. You can ignore that. Uh, so here's the first 30 periods. Already we see the mean is still zero, and we're staying a lot closer to zero. So when we go down, it sort of comes back up, it goes up, comes back down very quickly um, because basically each subsequent value is not really related to um, the previous ones. And so it's just sort of random whether we get a high value or a low value. We get a lot of these cases where it's just jumping up and down. But of course, just by chance, we could also get a few values in a row that are very similar. Um, so there's that. So again, here's the mean, same as before. Uh, but now it's just very jumpy, up and down, up and down. Um, this is uh, white noise, what that looks like. Um, and you can do the same thing for um, a value of row one in between, and you can see something in between. Uh, so another view here in the last part of the code is we'll take three different values of row, specifically 0, 0.7, and 0.9, and then we'll plot these 800 period series in parallel. So here you can see the 0.9 is very similar to the 0.95 that we saw at first, where it sort of goes up and then it stays up for a long time but it does eventually come back down, but then when it's down, it stays down for a while. Um, whereas here, 
the zero autocorrelation or zero serial correlation. It just has this white noise appearance where it's just going up and down, up and down, never getting too far away from the mean. And then when rho one is equal to 0.7, it's sort of in between. Um, it'll leave the mean for longer than the white noise, but not as long as the 0.9 first autocorrelation. So hope that helps give you some visual intuition for the autocorrelation of a time series.